Hello, everyone. I am Nami. I'm a third generation Japanese descendant from Brazil. And currently, I am a third year college student in Tokyo. First of all, it's a joy and a privilege to share with you what God has done in my life. But before we begin, let us have a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this opportunity for us to reflect upon the many ways that you are present and active in our lives. Please be with me as I share um, the many wonderful things you have done for me. And please be with those who are listening that they may receive um, your message. Thank you for all your blessings. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So today I would like to talk about two decisive moments that shaped how I see God and how I see myself. First, a little bit about my background. My maternal great-grandparents were two of the more than 200,000 Japanese immigrants who arrived in Brazil before World War II. They went to Brazil in 1926, a time when uh, the Japanese went to work mainly in the fields. One day in the countryside of the state of Sao Paulo, my great-grandfather received a visit from a co-porter student who was selling books. Co-porters are people who share about God through books. His name was Kyotaka Shikirai. Since my grand-grandmother was a midwife, she bought a book about health. Then Kyotaka Shirai invited the couple to send their eldest son to attend an Adventist college. My grand-grandfather allowed the oldest son to go, but he eventually dropped out of school and returned home. Then my grandfather, Kyoshi Hosokawa, asked to take his brother's place. He stayed at that school for 12 years, canvassing and working to support himself until he graduated college with a theology degree. Later, he became the first Japanese descendant pastor in Brazil. When my father, also a Japanese descendant pastor, was called to work as a missionary in Japan, my family was taken by surprise. But after praying about the matter, we decided to go and trust that God would provide. At that time, I was about to become a junior high school third year student. While there were school for Brazilian kids in Japan and also the option of going to public school, it was decided that, that I would attend a Christian boarding school called Hiroshima Sanikagakuin. I knew almost no Japanese, but it felt like a natural decision to make since there were many people in my family who had gone to boarding schools, so I didn't think much of it. I thought it would be okay. Unsurprisingly though, when I started school, things were much harder than I expected. Not only I had to adjust to Japanese culture, but also to living in the dorm, all in a language I didn't speak. I understood so little that every day was a surprise. What we would do, at what time, what we would eat, who was talking to me, and so on. By the end of the first week, I already wanted to quit. As the days went on, I couldn't bring myself to smile and felt depressed all the time. I didn't realize it then, but the reason I was so sad was not only because of the language barrier. Back in Brazil, I was used to having many friends, getting good grades, doing what I wanted to do, speaking what I wanted to say. But now that I was in Japan, I had none of those things. Without realizing, I had put my identity or my self-worth on things like my ability to study or to be a fun person. Now that all those things were taken away from me, I felt worthless and I felt lost. At the boarding school, people were extremely kind and very, very helpful, but they couldn't solve that inner struggle that I had. There, I just felt out of place. I felt stupid and alone. For a few months, all I could think about was, why am I here? I didn't ask to be here, and I could be doing much better elsewhere. Those were my thoughts. But at that time when everything around me was so unfamiliar, I clung to something that was not, my Portuguese Bible. Mm -hmm. Reading in my own language brought me comfort. So I decided to read the whole book that school year. Thinking back on it, I believe the Holy Spirit was working in my heart. One day I came across a verse that moved my heart. It was 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 9. It says, But he said to me, 
My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. This is God's answer when the Apostle Paul prayed to the Lord to take away something that was bothering him. This verse showed me two things. First, it showed me that even when we are weak, and especially when we are weak, God's grace abounds. Secondly, it showed me that even if I was facing challenges and everything I thought was important to me was gone, all I really needed was God. There is a verse in Jeremiah that talks about something similar. It reads, this is what the Lord says. Cursed is the one who trusts in man, who draws strength from mere flesh and whose heart turns away from the Lord. That person will be like a bush in the wastelands. They will not see prosperity when it comes. They will dwell in the parched places of the desert in a salt land where no one lives. But blessed is the one who trusts in the Lord, whose confidence is in him. They will be like a tree planted by the water that sends out its roots by the stream. It does not fear when he comes. Its leaves are always green. It has no worries in a year of drought and never fails to bear fruit. God's word in Corinthians 12, that his grace was enough, didn't exactly explain why I was going through a hard time, but it did show me that even if I was not in the most ideal situation, God was still right beside me. After reading that verse, my mindset changed. I started to, th to think, you know, it's okay if I have all these challenges. God can turn difficulties into blessings. So I will put all of this into his hands and trust that his grace is enough. That year, I was able to graduate junior high. And I have so many people I am grateful for, my teachers, my classmates, my family. And most of all, I am grateful for the way God led me and the way God taught me to rely upon him. Now, after that, I went to high school in a different country, but I would come back to Japan over summer and winter break every year. In the summer of my second year of high school, I heard about a canvassing program that was going to take place in Sapporo, and I was invited to participate. I was now fluent in Japanese and felt super nervous about knocking on people's doors. I didn't think I was the right kind of person to do canvassing. But since I am someone who has a hard time saying no, and since I grew up hearing about my grandfather and my mother's canvassing stories, I decided to accept. So I went to Sapporo. Before we actually begun, there was a training period. Um, it was hard practicing what to say in Japanese, but everyone was really helpful and I was somehow able to finish the training. Once we actually started though, I was confronted with a harsh reality. As is natural of canvassing, I would get rejected over and over again, like everyone else. But the problem was that I would also make many mistakes. Um, I would many times not understand what people would say to me sometimes, and it was hard to naturally make conversation. So in the end, I often relied on the leaders or my partners that were going with me to speak for me. I felt once again that the language barrier put me at a disadvantage, and it seemed to me I wasn't helping with anything. Even though I understood why canvassing and evangelism was so important, and I wanted to share about God with others, I felt just very discouraged. In those days, a very familiar question crept into my mind. Why am I here? I thought, looking around at my um, teammates, who were Japanese and spoke the language very well, other people can do this job much better than I ever could. So why am I here? Towards the end of a particularly hard day when I had barely sold anything, the team uh, was, I was in stopped at a street and the leader made a short prayer. She prayed asking, God, please help us reach the people only we can reach. And off we went back to knocking on people's doors. A few minutes later, I knocked on an elderly lady's door by myself. I started to explain what we were doing, but she quickly refused, saying she had a hard time reading because of her eyes and that she already had a certain newspaper, so she had a point to read. 
But before I went away, she asked me if I was a foreigner. So I told her yes, and that was learning Japanese. And then she suddenly became very interested. She told me that many years later, she had seen other young foreigners working hard to learn Japanese. And now, seeing my situation, she wanted to help me. In the end, she kindly bought four Signs of the Time magazines and even agreed when asked if I could pray for her. After I said goodbye and walked away, the words of the prayer came back to my mind. God, please help us reach the people only we can reach. Maybe if it had been someone else meeting this lady, she would have refused and not bought anything. And that would be the end of the story. But because it was me, God used my circumstances to open that lady's heart. That day, I understood why I was where I was. I thought about all the circumstances that had led me there. Beginning with the Japanese student witnessing to my great grandparents, my grandfather canvassing to support his studies to become a pastor, my father being called to Japan, myself learning Japanese, and now there I was. Throughout all of those events, God was there guiding all of those people and all of those circumstances. And now he had led me to that lady. I realized that all along, God had a very specific and perfectly fitting grand plan just for me. So to me, God is personal. He knows me, he cares for me, and he gives me a custom-made purpose in life. Recently, I learned that Pastor Shirai, the man who had sold books to my great-grandparents, was actually from Sapporo. Who knew that many decades later, I would be canvassing in his city? God really works in mysterious ways. So to me, God is global. He orchestrates people and events over the course of history so that as many as people as possible can be reached and blessed by his love. And he did that in my life. A few years have passed since these events, and I'm currently a college student, still unsure about my future. But wherever I am and whatever the future will look like, God has shown me that I don't have to worry. That even when all I can see are my shortcomings and my challenges, even when circumstances are not ideal, God's grace is enough, and he's working behind the scenes, orchestrating his grand plan. I'm still a work in progress, but life with God as the foundation of who I am is so much better in every way because God's perfect love casts out fear. When we put our life into his hands, he can lead us to fulfill the amazing purpose that he has for each one of us. Today, I can confidently say that even if we're not sure of it ourselves, God has a purpose for you and me.